Moin! What you're witnessing here is a 3D printed lightsaber that I adorned with some DIY copper electroforming and then electroplated with various other metals. Essentially it serves as a prime example of what you can achieve through sufficient post-processing these days. And frankly, once you've laid eyes on and handled the metallic aesthetics of props like these, then you won't want to let go of it. Consider this as a brief exploration of the possibilities of electroplating 3D prints and learn how you can replicate this lightsaber or similar creations on your own. Let's go! As always, everything starts with a 3D print. As you may know, I prefer resin prints. On the one hand, they offer many great details with significantly fewer visible layers. And on the other hand, they can be wonderfully prepared, i.e. sanded. This is still the most important step. When printing the parts, make sure that they do not warp and are well supported. In my case, there are almost 20 parts. And the great thing is that there was an assembly manual included with the model. Now just seal the holes because I like to save material and printed the parts hollow. And of course, don't forget to cure them. Next, we will put the whole thing together somewhat provisionally and take a look at the points on which we want to focus. Generally, the print is already quite good, but it really needs to be smooth. There are a few spots that we should pay special attention to. Additionally, we'll talk about clearance, but first let's get some sandpaper, 600 and 1000 grits are okay. When starting sanding, remember to wear respirator and gloves. In general, I always recommend erring on the side of caution and wearing the maximum PPE. With this piece, you can see how important sanding is. Any irregularities will show up after electroforming. In fact, all mistakes are visible after electroforming. So it's crucial to take your time and put in a lot of effort during this initial sanding process. Regarding clearance, some parts are assembled very tightly together. It's essential to know that the applied copper thickness should not be neglected. Therefore, I measure and calculate how many space I need to leave between the components. As a rule of thumb, I always assume a 200 micrometer layer. I file and widen the parts to the correct size. Try to bind the dust and keep the work area relatively clean. To start round 2 with even finer sandpaper. Make sure everything is really nice and smooth. Pay attention to the details as any scratches you see now will definitely show up later. And when you're sure that everything is tip top, you can clean the parts in water because we'll now be applying the conductive paint. The conductive paint I have always used is copper based and is diluted with a 1 to 2 ratio of acetone. It comes in a durable can. From now on I will be linking almost all the items in the description, which I didn't do before but was often requested. These are all affiliate links, so if you feel like buying the items, please use these links and I may receive a small commission. By the way, it's a good idea to Avoid the clearance issue altogether by masking off certain areas and not electroplating them. Simply use tape to mask them off and remove the tape after spraying. Spray very gently with about 2 bar of pressure. It's better to apply multiple thin layers instead of one thick layer. After you've sprayed everything, it's best to let it dry thoroughly for a few hours. Next we will electroplate almost everything that's on this lightsaber, including the black pommel inserts. For this, we use an acidic copper electrolyte. I use commercial ones that also include a brightener. You will also need a laboratory power supply and copper sheets. Always keep the copper anodes clean and if necessary, clean them with steel wool. During electroforming, the copper disintegrates and contaminates the electrolyte. 
That's why you should insert the copper sheets into large coffee filters and put them in polypropylene bags for easier handling. Attach these copper sheets to the edges of your copper bars and connect both with the positive pole of the power supply. The conductive object goes in the middle. If you want, you can use a rotary jig to make it evenly coated and avoid anode shadows. Now decap the 3D printed part with a 10% citric acid solution, rinse it with distilled water and hang it in the center of the bath connected to the negative pole. Adjust the current to the correct amperage and wait for about 4 hours. After that, you can remove the part and rinse it with clean water. Now do the same process for all the other parts. Of course, you can also hang multiple parts together. The important thing is to make sure the current is set correctly. I will explain everything else in the next upcoming comprehensive tutorial. So this is what the parts look like in the end. They haven't been polished yet and are all coming out like this. Let me say a few words about handling environmentally harmful chemicals and the responsible use of such. Collect everything you can and take it to the recycling center. Be the good guys. Now the copper plated prints are sanded and polished. From my point of view, this is necessary to achieve this beautiful mirror effect. They already look good, but there are still some small fine traces of impurities on almost all pieces. We will remove those. By the way, you can see here how insufficiently sanded areas can transfer onto the plating. For polishing, I use paper starting from 1000 grit and finish with polishing paste. The shine only unfolds completely at the end with this. Copper is a good base for the other metals we will be applying. I am now electroplating using a nickel bath. Nickel sulfate is carcinogenic, so always remember to wear your respirator and safety goggles. It is best to do this kind of work outdoors or in well ventilated areas. Even better, you can use palladium electrolyte instead of nickel. First, you need to degrease the copper, then rinse with water. Then deplate using citric acid and rinse again. Then you can either dip the parts into the electrolyte for a short time or apply palladium using a galvanic brush. We will be gold plating these parts next. This is what it should look like afterwards. Now we are gold plating. For this I'm using 24k hard gold and a galvanic pen or rather just a graphite anode with non-woven since my galvanic pen is currently broken. But you should get yourself a proper holder. Gold is great by the way. It deposits really quickly and is very productive. The parts already look very nice when attached. Now things are getting a little crazy. Some parts of the lightsaber are black. I'm going to blacken the copper plate parts using a chemical blackening process. It's a little tricky, but it works quite well and here's how it's done. First, put on your safety goggles. Divide the blackening solution, water and blackening oil into three containers. Degrease the copper objects, which I'm doing electrically, and then dip them briefly into the blackening solution until they turn black. Then rinse and repeat this process about 5 times. Next, put the objects into the blackening oil, take them out after 30 minutes and let them dry for 24 hours. 
Alternatively, you can just paint them black instead of going through this process. <laughs> now we need those red buttons. It's good that I have red translucent resin. It's been expired for years, but it still prints well. They look okay, but instead of clear coating them, I'm going to sand and polish them until they are perfectly smooth and shiny. I didn't even know this would work so well until now. <laughs> 